Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, millions watched Burke Ramsey speak out for the first time in 20 years. Now, many of you have commented on Burke's smile. Let me give you my interpretation of that. Your questions? Why wouldn't the Ramseys speak to the police? The magazines have written that Burke or his mom did it. Why did they have these headlines if it isn't true? Was Jomine being sexually abused? Your comments? Did they have any rivalries in any of these beauty pageants? Is that why she was murdered? Answered. He was nine years old when this happened. He wasn't a suspect, people. The Burke Ramsey interviews. Well, I want to thank everyone for your interest in the shows that we've been doing exploring the 20-year-old unsolved mystery of who killed six-year-old John Benet Ramsey. There have been such interest in the shows that we have decided to devote some additional time to delve deeper into the facts of this compelling story. Now, millions of people have watched the story unfold, and thousands of people have posted on social media. And I want to thank all of you that have expressed support for Burke, who has spoken out for the first time in 20 years. This was not easy for him. Here's a look at some of what Burke has revealed so far. The night that your sister, John Bonet, was killed, there were three people in that house that we know the identity of, and you're one of those three, you, your mother, and your father. But in the 20 years that have gone by, you're the one that has never talked about this publicly. My question for you is why now and why here? For a long time, the media basically made our lives crazy. Seeing that as a little kid, it's just kind of a chaotic nightmare. It's the 20th anniversary, and there's apparently still a lot of attention around it. I want to honor her memory uh, by doing this. Do you know how long she's been gone? Oh, my God. Please, we just got out. Is she right here? Oh, my God, please. Did you know she was looking for John Bonet? Uh, I remember her saying, where's my baby? Where's my baby? The child beauty queen was found in the basement of her family's home the day after Christmas. My dad came and told me JonBenet is in heaven now, and he started crying. Then I started crying. It was all really sad, but it didn't matter me that in heaven. I don't really think of her as dead. I just think of her as, you know, in heaven. There were more mistakes made in this case than any other case I've ever seen. Within a week, it was clear that the Boulder Police Department had made up its mind. It was someone in the household. Game, set, match. It has been said that you and Patsy did not cooperate with the police, that you, in fact, obstructed this investigation. That's well, totally false. Police came to our home, and we talked to them for, it seemed like, hours. And they started this, well, we need you to come down to the police station. And that by now we had media trucks out in front, and Patsy was in no condition to be moved. She was in bad shape. Patsy, Patsy, Patsy. Patsy, Patsy. Patsy. The police department thought they heard something in the background after Patsy hung up on the 911 call. It was their opinion that Burke could be heard in the background. You can hear what is clearly keystrokes of a computer as that 911 operator continued, I'm sure, to fill out the report. I had it tested. There's no voice on there that's Burke Ramsey's. Former police investigators with the Boulder Police Department say that your voice was heard saying, what did you find? Did you speak those words? No. Were you there when that call was made? No. There are people then and now still that speculate that this woman brutally murdered her own daughter. People that think that show a profound lack of common sense. It's cruel humanity. Well, what do you remember about John Bonet? I remember like sliding down the hill on boxes and we'd draw the inside and make it look like a car or something. It's been 20 years, still unsolved. You don't want her to be forgotten. That's right. I don't want anybody to stop working on a case. I want them to focus on finding the real killer and not making up bogus theories about me and my parents. Okay, now, first off the top, many of you have commented on Burke's smile that when he's talking about something that's very serious, even though 20 years after the fact, 
that he's smiling. So let me give you my interpretation of that. Um, this is anxiety. Uh, he's socially uncomfortable. I've seen it a lot. He's not autistic. He's not weird. He's not creepy. He's just nervous. Um, this is a young man that has grown up in kind of a siege mentality. I've spent a lot of time with him over the last several months. And you have to understand, when this happened, he was plucked out because media was all over them. So he's been moved around a lot. He lived in isolation quite a bit. And he's just not socially comfortable. And he's certainly not comfortable uh, being on camera. And so when people get anxious, you know, sometimes they'll pull their hair. Sometimes they'll, you know, kind of do this kind of thing. Uh, for him, he just has kind of a nervous smile. And, uh, but he wanted to do this. And he wanted to do it because he knew at the 20th anniversary that he was going to get pushed to the forefront because he's the one person in all of this that has never spoken. And he was already getting bombarded with requests and people finding him. We know of five or six programs, movies, documentaries that are being done right now about this story. But even with the discomfort, Burke wanted to do this because he knew that it was the 20th anniversary and he wanted to honor his sister. And he said if his story was going to be told, he wanted to be the one telling it. Uh, so, you know, what you're seeing is nervousness. I've spent a lot of time with this young man. He's very intelligent uh, and he's very personable when you spend time with him. But what you're seeing is just anxiety expressing itself. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, with 20 years of analysis and reanalysis, and after seeing your level of interest and looking at all your comments, I thought I'd review some of the facts and answer some of the questions. So let's just get started. I'm going to first take a question from the audience. Terry, you had a question, right? Yes. All right, um, what's your question? Has Burke ever been considered a suspect at any point? Uh, has Burke ever been considered a suspect? Absolutely, unequivocally, no. Now, the Boulder Police Department uh, was very biased and prejudiced in this. They targeted the Ramseys from the beginning. And let me say, whenever a child dies violently in a home, statistics are that the parents are who you look to first. Family members are who you look to first. That's just statistically what you do. But the Boulder Police Department were very tunnel vision, very singular in focusing on the Ramseys. But even with their prejudice and bias, Burke Ramsey has never been a suspect. He has never been a person of interest. He only was considered a witness. So the Boulder PD, the Boulder DA, the FBI, the, the sheriff, no one has ever considered him a suspect then or now. So he's never been because, I mean, he was nine. Uh, he was nine years old. So, okay, my next question is from Michelle, who writes on Facebook. Why, after all of these years, do people still think Burke and his family did it? Well, I'm kind of talking about that already. And, Michelle, that's only some people. Um, and I can tell you they do it because it's like everything else. You know, if you read something on the Internet... Uh, people kind of think, well, it's on the Internet, it must be true. There has been so much rumor and story and innuendo about this case that it is just astounding. Uh, but I want to talk about the facts. Now, uh, when this case got underway, the Boulder Police Department hired Lou Smith. Now, he was a retired police investigator. So this is a guy that's retired. And they brought him back. He ultimately resigned from the case in frustration because he thought the police were not investigating the case properly. Take a look. I believe that when the case first started, that it did look like the Ramseys did this. I even thought that initially. The Boulder District Attorney's Office hired Lou Smith out of retirement to help them with their role in the investigation. Lou Smith was 
the best of the best in terms of homicide investigators. Even the Boulder District Attorney's Office knew that the Boulder Police Department's investigation was deteriorating into a joke. He believes that there was considerable evidence that an intruder committed this crime. He commented on the window that was focused on as being an entry exit where there were leaves in the window well to the basement of all the windows on that side of the house except this one. I remember reading several law enforcement officials saying, there's just no way someone could get through this window. Can you show me how you believe someone could? Yes, I've been in there several times myself. Why don't you show me how you believe it happened? You notice, Katie, too, that this is an area that's real hidden from view. There's fences all around, and this is a perfect place to go in because nobody can see you. The Boulder Police Department has contended it investigated all leads, but Smith insists the Boulder PD never really pursued the intruder theory. It's astounding to me that when you go back and read this record, the Boulder police say an intruder could not get in the basement window and you just saw a 60-something-year-old man just slide in the window. That's Lou Smith, the investigator. Um, I, astounding to me. Uh, next, somebody wanted to know why did Bert give a lot of one-word answers? Well, I'm going to tell you when we come back. My question is, what DNA was found and where and whose was it? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. You set your house on fire. Not purposely. That was to get rid of the bugs. Bizarre behavior. He tore the deck down yes. and used it for firewood. How did the dog get burned? He tripped. How did he get painted? And a family. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. All trying to fix him. Why didn't you call? Let me, me talk. Is it that about you? You want to cause drama? You are drama. That's tomorrow. Today, it's the interview 20 years in the making that has everyone talking. John Bonet Ramsey's older brother, Burke Ramsey, breaks his silence two decades after his sister was murdered on Christmas night in Boulder, Colorado in 1996. Now we're addressing some of the thousands of comments pouring in and catching everyone up on the facts of the case as it stands today because frankly, across 20 years, so many facts, theories, myths, have developed it's just too much to cover and we just ran out of time in the two hour shows that we have but there's another show coming up on monday where we'll be covering even more a lot of people are asking me dr phil why weren't you cross-examining him more uh, we've seen you time and time again and we know you are a hard-edged cross-examiner you drill down and do not let people wiggle well because he wasn't a suspect, people. He was nine years old when this happened. When this happened, this was a nine-year-old boy lying in his bed. No one has ever considered this kid a suspect. I'm not going to grill somebody who was nine years old when his sister was murdered. Not one agency on the face of the globe has ever considered this kid a suspect. I don't consider him a suspect. When I talk to him, when I ask him the questions, uh, he, he, he gave me what he knew. And, you know, across 20 years, memories decay. And we look at it based on what we know, what we've heard, what we've read. He was in bed when this happened. And when he woke up, he was whisked out of the home and taken to a friend's house. So. He doesn't know what went on, and so a lot of his answers are short because he doesn't know much and his memories have decayed. I found him very forthcoming. I found him very transparent, and he was really willing to answer anything. And I said when I was introducing him for the interview, I said he did it without a law, you know, lawyer present because he didn't need one. And by the way, Lynn Wood, who you've seen answering questions, he was present when I was talking to John, but that was only because I was interviewing John and Lynn on the same day. John did not request a lawyer to be present either.
John Ramsey did not request a lawyer be present at all, and he also put no restrictions on the interview whatsoever. Uh, what I found interesting, and you'll see this in the show on Monday, was him recalling his relationship with John Bonet and how they played together and how they teased each other and what fun they had. And I think you'll really enjoy the insight that you'll get in Monday's show because this is the first time that you're going to hear it from that perspective. You've heard experts and pundits and speculators. You're going to hear from her brother and what went on between the two of them. Um, I have a question from, uh, is it N Naira? Yes. Uh, my question is, what DNA was found and where and whose was it? Okay. There was DNA evidence that was taken from a blood spot in the underwear and on the waistband of John Bonet's leggings, and that was determined to be from an unknown male and does not match any of the Ramseys. It could not be them. Then there was touch DNA, which was tested in 2008. The technology did not exist to test for touch DNA back when the crime actually committed. That technology wasn't available and wasn't tested for until 2008. And what I, what I was saying is you want more markers than were available, uh, so they did the best testing they could. You always want bigger and bigger samples. They tested what they had. The DNA report uh, results exonerating Burke and the family uh, were given to the police within two weeks of John Bonet's murder, but they weren't given to the DA for seven months. So the Ramsey family attorney, Lynn Wood, wrote a letter to Mary Lacey, and they had a secret meeting where she finally admitted that she agreed the Ramseys had been targeted by the Boulder DA and that it was getting out of control. This led to an unprecedented act. Take a look. I learned just recently that within two weeks, the police were given a report by the Colorado Bureau of Investigation Lab, whoever looked at the DNA, and said this DNA excludes this list of people, including John Ramsey, Patsy Ramsey, Burke Ramsey, and others. That report was given to the police within two weeks. They did not share that with the district attorney for seven months. They knew within two weeks that the DNA excluded the family, and yet they withheld that information. I wrote the city of Boulder, and I copied district attorney Lacey, and I said in no uncertain terms, if this investigation is not transferred out of the hands of the Boulder Police Department into the hands of a third-party, objective, competent law enforcement agency, I'm going to sue the city of Boulder, and you're going to be the laughing stock of the country when the truth comes out about the incompetence of your department in this investigation. That letter gave District Attorney Mary Blasey what she needed to call me and say, I want to talk to you. And I remember sitting there with her and I said, it has to stop and only you can stop it. And I'll never forget, she looked at me and she said, I agree with you. And she committed that her department would take over the investigation, which they did. And then District Attorney Lacey issued a public statement to apologize to them and to make clear that going forward from that day, they would be treated as victims because they were, in fact, victims. The parents have now been cleared in that little girl's murder. They are no longer suspects. New DNA technology has cleared them. This was technology that was not available when investigators were first looking at the murder of Jean Benet Ramsey. Has John Ramsey, scientifically and based on the position of law enforcement, been exonerated as having anything to do with John Benet Ramsey's death? Yes, beyond a reasonable doubt, he has been exonerated. Well, next, investigators said there were no footprints in the snow outside the Ramsey home the day John Benet's body was found meaning someone in the house must have killed her. So what's that all about? We'll talk about that after the break.
Intruders don't levitate in, kill someone, and then levitate out. If there are no footprints in the snow, somebody in the house did it. They put that lie out there, and everybody has hung their hat on that. There was no snow to leave footprints in. We're taking your questions on John Benet Ramsey's case, and as we mentioned earlier, the Boulder police were feeding the media sensational details to put pressure on the Ramsey family. Now, a great example of something they leaked is that there were no footprints in the snow. Now, Lee tweeted about that. Quote, everyone says there were no footprints in the snow outside John Benet's house. So it had to be someone inside. Now, this was probably the number one thing that made people prejudice against the Ramses. Well, <laughs> there was a big problem with the no footprints in the snow explanation. And here it is. I took the sworn testimony of the district attorney at the time, Alex Hunter, in litigation. And Alex Hunter testified under oath that the Boulder Police Department, working with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, came up with a plan to leak selective false accusatory information against the family members so that it would potentially pressure them into what they believed might be a confession or some error, a misstep that would help them prove their case. The Rocky Mountain News published a statement that was based on unnamed police sources. That police sources stated that there were no footprints in the snow surrounding the Ramsey home on the night of the murder. That's it. <laughs> Intruders don't levitate in, kill someone, and then levitate out. If there are no footprints in the snow, somebody in the house did it. The problem is that statement was false. That statement was false, and you don't have to go any further than to look at the crime scene photos taken the morning that she was found missing that show that there were only patches of snow. Right, we're on looking the at a crime scene photo, full screen right now and there's not snow around the house. That's what you're referring to. Absolutely. Look at the, the pathways, the walkways into the house, immediately surrounding the house. There's no snow. Okay, this is what really bothers me uh, about this. In, in interrogation, police have the right to lie to a suspect. They do. This went beyond that. They put into the media that there were no footprints in the snow. What they failed to mention is there was no snow. <laughs> okay, this is the window that you saw Lou Smith. This is a picture taken the, the morning of the crime. There's no snow. So all of these people that on the internet all of these years have been saying that you debunked the intruder theory because there were no footprints in the snow. There was no snow! The Boulder police, they said under oath they were doing this to put pressure on the Ramseys so they would come forward and confess. Okay, Harriet, you had a question. Why wouldn't the Ramseys speak to the police? They did give them interviews, but they did go about this somewhat differently, and I'll tell you why. They got a call from a friend who told them you are being targeted by the Boulder police. They have made up their mind. They are not looking at intruders. They are not looking at any pedophiles from pageant shows. They have decided that you are guilty. They are targeting you. They are setting you up. You need to watch yourself. And at that point, they decided they needed to get themselves a lawyer. But they did cooperate with them. They did interviews with them. They gave them hair samples, DNA samples. At the time that it immediately happened, Patsy had kind of the presentation problem that Burke had. Patsy didn't look the way people thought a typical grieving mother should look. 
like Burke doesn't look the way a typical grieving brother you might think. Everybody grieves differently, but still people have a stereotypic view. She was just barely able to communicate in any way. They decided they wanted to take the body home, out of state, to have the funeral. And the Boulder police said they were going to hold the body hostage until they came in and talked. And other authorities said, you absolutely cannot do that. So it got very adversarial very quickly. All right, next, the two things people still keep talking about. Why do some people still believe the theory that Patsy Ramsey uh, actually went into a fit of rage after John Bonet accidentally wet the bed? years after the Ramsey family has been publicly exonerated. Plus, once and for all, was there a voice at the end of Patsy's 911 call? This, too, has been answered many years ago. We'll clear this up after the break. We're taking your questions on the John Bonet Ramsey case. A lot of people want to know more about the DNA, which is covered in our next installment of this series, airing on Monday. Here's another thing that a lot of people are focusing on on Twitter. Katie tweets, Oh my God, Burke says John Bonet was a bedwetter. That makes me think maybe the theory about Patsy killing her was true. You know, first, Look at the crime scene picture of John Bonet's bed sheets. They, <laughs> they weren't wet or stained, and there was no evidence supporting rage by Patsy, who again was cleared by the Boulder PD, who early on targeted her, and by the Boulder DA in 2008. Uh, here's what Burke Ramsey's lawyer, Lynn Wood, says about the theory that Patsy killed John Bonet accidentally after a bedwetting incident the night of her death. People believed that Patsy got very angry and lost her temper at John Bonet for wetting her bed and cracked her skull open in the bathroom. That's not who Patsy Ramsey is or was. This is not a person capable of flying into a rage over her child wetting the bed. The crime scene photos clearly show that the bed was not wet, had no urine stains. I think most people know urine stains don't disappear. But the Boulder Police Department maintained that theory for years. You must have conjured something in your head for you to come out and call me a murderer of my child. Their lead detective, Steve Thomas, wrote a book trying to capitalize on this child's murder. That's his theory. It's the best they could do. And the best they could do was not supported by physical evidence. Now, she did have some urine in her tights but you have to understand she had been murdered you do lose control of your bodily functions when your body is shutting down but it had nothing to do with wetting the bed uh, eric on facebook posted i'm still unclear so can you hear burke's voice at the end of the 911 tape or not Okay, this is something I can speak to personally because I've heard enhanced versions of the tape. I, I can just tell you my opinion. There's not Burke's voice on the end of that tape. There's not anybody's voice on the end of that tape. The call was tested by independent labs. They determined that there was no voice at the end of the tape. There has never been credible investigation of the 911 tape that discovered any voices. Now, you can hear a click as Patsy hangs up the wall phone. And you hear no voices after that, let alone Burke's. So that's one of these theories that's out there. Um, but there's never been any evidence to support it whatsoever. Uh, Brianna posted over on Facebook, did the Ramseys ever take polygraph tests? Yes. Uh, both John and Patsy took polygraph tests. They did not take polygraph tests from the Boulder PD because of their adversarial relationships, uh, their attorney contacted an independent examiner that was the best of the best, much like we use here, 
um, that worked with the FBI and gave the polygraph test, demanded that the results be made public. Both John and Patsy, I believe, took multiple polygraph tests and both passed them. I think Patsy may have had one that was inconclusive early on. She did not fail, it was inconclusive. She ultimately took, passed the test. John passed the test. Uh, Burke, of course, was never polygraphed because he was never a suspect in the case. So they, yes, they did take polygraph tests and, and both passed the test. Uh, they're not admissible in a court of law, but they did pass polygraph tests. Uh, next, the ransom note was the real monkey wrench that people have talked about in this case. Uh, we'll discuss that after the break. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Bizarre behavior. You set your house on fire. And a family. He painted the dog. Trying to fix him. You want to cause drama? You are drama. That's tomorrow. It's one of the main things people talk about when discussing the mystery of who killed John Bonet. Rachel writes that S in the ransom note looked like Patsy's, but Burke says it doesn't look like her writing, so was it her? Well, Patsy could not be fully ruled out, but not by much. Uh, federal Judge Carnes who was ruling in a case where the Ramses had brought uh, a suit against a journalist for libel. And the judge wrote in her opinion that the chances that Patsy wrote this note, she characterized it as very low. Lynn Wood deposed former DA Alex Hunter. And he admitted that she was about a 4.5 out of 5 on being eliminated. So he said she was not totally eliminated, but was, quote, close to elimination. And when you're trying to determine who writes something, you don't really look for similarities. The technology and the science has to do with the numerous dissimilarities and do not put much credence in the similarities themselves. Take a look. The police were absolutely convinced that Patsy wrote that ransom note, and therefore, she must be the killer. It was a quantum leap. The law enforcement handwriting experts had concluded that on a one to five scale, five being elimination, didn't write it. Patsy Ramsey was scored at between four and 4.5, virtually eliminated. But they couldn't eliminate her. They should have. But they couldn't, because if you eliminate Patsy, then you have totally blown out of the water the Boulder Police Department's theory that they went with that it had to be John. Nope, we decided it's not John, so it must have been Patsy. Okay, Lydia, what's your question? Hi, Dr. Phil. Uh, the magazines through the years have written that Burke or his mom did it. Why did they have these headlines if it isn't true? Well, we, we know a tabloid wouldn't write anything if it wasn't true, right? So I'm certain that that's true. They don't write anything about me that isn't true. This goes back to the police uh, releasing misinformation that pointed to uh, the Ramseys being guilty. And as I said, the Boulder police wanted to pressure the family into a confession. And as we said earlier, DA Alex Hunter, under deposition, admitted that the Boulder PD leaked lies to the press to get these headlines. Burke's attorney sued those tabloids. Next, it's been speculated that whoever killed John Bonet could have been sexually abusing her. But is that true? We'll talk about that next. Maggie Hassan's priorities are working for New Hampshire. New Hampshire froze tuition. She understands that we need good highway systems. Hassan is an advocate for public safety. She's kept spending under control. And how does Maggie Hassan get these things done? By balancing the budget without an income or sales tax. Creating a surplus. 
and by working with anyone and everyone to create a better environment for business innovation. A new senator making fiscal responsibility work for you. I'm Maggie Hassan, and I approve this message. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. You set your house on fire. Bizarre behavior. How'd the dog get burned? He tripped. And a family. You don't know what you're talking you're about. All trying to fix him. Why didn't you let me talk? You want to cause drama? You are drama. That's tomorrow. We're back talking about the tragic death of John Benet Ramsey. We are at the 20 year anniversary of her death and it still remains unsolved. One of the theories that has lived throughout this 20 years is that John Benet was the victim of sexual molestation. And this has taken a lot of different uh, turns. One being that she was in these beauty pageants and that this may have attracted pedophiles and that maybe someone, uh, maybe someone that had attended these pageants or someone that had followed her and gotten close to her in some way uh, was sexually molesting her. It went so far as some people opining that maybe someone in the family, either a family member or a close family friend, that someone was uh, molesting her. So this has been out there. Uh, as well. Uh, Brian, where are you? You have a specific question about yes, uh, that. Was John Monet being sexually abused and uh, maybe by someone from her beauty pageants? Well, it, and I, I guess when you say was she, you mean was there evidence that she was? Um, there has never been a formal finding made um, that she was sexually abused. When you look at the autopsy, there is no finding in the autopsy report from which you could conclude that there was any ongoing sexual molestation or abuse. Now, the autopsy did comment that during the death, during her murder that night, that she had been uh, assaulted that night, probably with a foreign object, most likely the paintbrush. Uh, but that was that night. There was not a finding that she had been molested long term. There was just not evidence of that. Uh, John Bonet's doctor vigorously denied ever finding any evidence of sexual abuse across time. So, in terms of evidence, no. There's no evidence other than that night she had been sexually assaulted that night, according to the autopsy. So that's what we know. Okay, any other question? Anybody have? Yes, ma'am. Did they have any rivalries or anything that someone would have to go and, like, cut out the competition in any of these beauty pageants? Is that why that she was murdered, that it was too much of a competition? I don't think you can rule out anything like that um, when you don't know who it is and uh, she clearly was uh, put out there and uh, what we know from Burke is he said that this was a fun thing uh, that Patsy and John Bonet shared it wasn't something you know we, we see a lot of stage moms and they push these kids and spend fortunes on these wigs and costumes and all that kind of stuff. That did not appear to be the case here. So it didn't seem like this was a highly competitive activity. Does that mean that somebody wasn't threatened by her or something? I don't know. Uh, but it certainly, this wasn't one of those dog-eat-dog -dog pageant uh, patterns that that you hear about sometimes, so we don't see a, a history of that. But, you know, we don't know. I, I think we know who didn't kill her, but we don't know who did. Um, everybody has been commenting uh, on Burke's seemingly strange behavior, and they want to know what this guy is like in his real life. So everybody is curious about what's going on with Burke today. What's he do when uh, he's just out and about in the world. Uh, he's a pretty private guy, but I'll tell you a little bit more about him when, when I get back. 
Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Okay, Audrey, you have a question, right? What is Burke's life like like today? He's, he's happy uh, in his life now. He um, is a computer analyst. Uh, he works remotely. He's not around people a lot. He's kind of a loner. He's dating a very nice young lady and seems to have a, a pretty nice life. Gets along well with his dad. From a psychological perspective, I'm always interested in the difference between speculation and measurement. With speculation and prediction, you have to look at what's going on and predict what someone might do or what their patterns might be going forward. But with the passage of time, you don't have to speculate. You can observe and measure. And for anyone that would have uh, suspicions about Burke, you would look at his first nine years and see if there's any history of him behaving in a bizarre fashion, you know, torturing or killing small animals or being violent in some way, and there's absolutely none of that. And now we have 20 years of his life to have observed. Has he been in trouble with the law? Has he been arrested for any kind of antisocial behavior or uh, anything that's brought him into conflict with authorities? And the answer is absolutely no. I don't think the guy's gotten a parking ticket. And um, I think he's doing pretty well in his life. Um, so that's all we have time for today. Uh, on Monday, September 19th, you're going to hear a lot more about Burke's story. We're going to hear a lot more details. You're going to find out who he thinks killed his sister, John Bonet. Uh, he has some very strong feelings about this, and we're going to cover a lot more. There's just so much here, we couldn't cover it in the three shows that we had planned, so we added this one. I hope this has helped clear uh, some things, add some additional facts, and we'll have more about this on Monday. I want to thank you for all your questions, and we'll see you next time.